In this lecture, we're going to make the point that culture isn't just an optional add-on to human societies. It is at the very core of how modern humans have emerged and survived. The survival of humans to the present day looked quite unlikely, even as recently as 15,000 years ago, which is roughly when this cave painting in Spain was created. Homo sapiens were outmatched by predators such as saber-toothed tigers and cave bears. However, early humans did manage to survive and flourish, developing agriculture, cities, and eventually sophisticated civilizations. Mind you, it wasn't any physical endowments that enabled our success but instead our cultural capabilities. It turned out that we have an incredible talent for creating shared understandings of our environment that assist us in adapting to it together. In this lecture, we're going to focus on three tools that made up our cultural survival kit. Abstraction, cooperation, and production. First, let's look at abstraction. What we mean by this is the ability to take in the complexity of concrete experience and to put it into meaningful categories or what we can call concepts. Think about our ancestors foraging for food and learning the hard way we can assume to share the knowledge of what is poisonous and what is edible. Concepts are important because they are the foundations for beliefs. In other words, what the members of a culture take to be true. Think back to our friends, the Easter Islanders, who shared the belief that cutting down all of the trees was okay because their chiefs would fix things. As we know, that belief was not very effective as a survival tool. The second tool in our cultural survival kit is cooperation. By that we mean the ability to collectively create a world where social life is regulated by norms or accepted ways of doing things and also values, shared understandings about what a community prefers. Personal space, which we introduced in module one, is an example of a social norm that is shared in a community. Human beings have taken cooperation to such an extent that even conflict is regulated by norms. In other words, we cooperate even on how we will fight with one another. Most armed conflict, for example, follows the Geneva Conventions. The third tool in our cultural survival kit is production. And here we're going to make a distinction between material culture and non-material culture. In part, production refers to our capacity for using tools and techniques to transform nature. And we call this material culture. Production also refers to non-material culture, our ability to create techniques of social organization or artistic expression. In other words, the production of ideas. In reality, material and non-material culture aren't so clearly distinguished. The image here is an example of exactly what we mean. The Basilica de la Sagrada Familia in Spain is one of the most incredible pieces of architecture on earth. We could call this church, which is still unfinished after 100 years of construction, a shining example of material culture. But it's also a sublime example of non-material culture an architectural form that expresses religiosity and awe. None of these cultural survival tools covered here would have been usable without the human capacity to think and communicate in terms of symbols. 
By symbol, we mean a concrete thing or an abstract term that represents something else. For example, the crosses on the spires of the church we just looked at are symbols of Christianity. What's interesting about symbols is that there's no natural intrinsic connection between a symbol and its understood meaning. A circle with a red backslash through it means no, but it could just as easily mean yes or free food or greetings. The meanings of symbols then rely on understandings that are shared through a, a culture. Let's have a look at a couple. First, the dove with an olive branch means peace. This is a symbol that goes back uh, approximately 2,500 years to the ancient Greeks and then through early Christianity. Here's another symbol with some shock value. Some 85 years after Adolf Hitler adapted an ancient symbol meaning goodness or the wheel of life and made it the logo for a racist drive to global domination. What the story of the swastika shows us is that the meaning of symbols can be changed quite dramatically. Symbols that in one culture mean one thing can have very different meanings in other cultures. In North American culture, a safe way of indicating that everything's okay is by making this symbol. In some Mediterranean countries, however, to make this hand sign is to insult someone by calling them by a certain part of their anatomy.